Okay. Um, would you would you also ascribe to the argument that um, university education is more theoretical than practical? Yeah, very theoretical, not practical. Because okay. if you come here, it's kind of only babedi as uh, Jones was saying. You know, what, what do you think students are not being innovative in themselves? They're not willing to um, do something for themselves. I think it's because of the syllabus. Like the lectures come, uh, the lectures, uh, lectures, they come in, they give us a whole lot of notes, pack, come, do presentation, and a whole lot of stuff. So it's kind of everything is theoretical. Everything is theoretical. There's no practical. Do yeah. how, how, how would you wish that changed? Okay, to me, I think there should be a lot of practicalities because that's why, especially with the engineering. I remember we were uh, one day after school. We are passing by the engineering fa faculty, and those guys you can see you could see engineering students. They were standing by all these old old engineer engine engines, and the teacher was just telling them this is this, and they were just taking notes. Like to me, I see it as at least all the whole class. Someone should each one should be sitting by his own engine, assessing the whole thing for him or herself. But it was rather the lecturer or even the TA was like pointing this is this this is this so you have no option but to learn the theoretical uh, uh, aspect of the whole thing and not the practical George, how has um your studies been how difficult has it been um looking at um what um your colleague is saying in respect of the theory, theory uh in the classroom well i'll say that with the theory you see the time the time is normally limited so the lecturers do not have any space for you to introduce you into any practicality the time for the slab i don't know is limited and also you can see that the lecturers are very busy doing this and that and the opportunities created for the students to i mean have some practical training is not there for instance um during long vacation the students can be I mean, recommended for companies or for institutions so that they can have their practical hold. um also because after all when you go out you are going to the industries you are going to work so you should be given the opportunity the, the the opportunity should be there so that when you i mean have time you can go out and practice what you've learned in school and i think that one will help uh, thank you very much. It's 1406. You type F, leave a space and follow with your message. This is 94.3 Focus FM. Uh, breaking news coming in here. And the KNUSD has dropped in university rankings. That's the world university rankings for Africa. We've moved from 20th to 53rd. And, uh, well, the University of Ghana has moved from 30th to 39th. So what is standing now is just a hint. Uh, university of Ghana is first in uh, Ghana. In respect of the university ranking in Africa, the Kenya University has moved from 20th to 53rd, and uh, the University of Ghana has moved from 30, um, 30th to 39th. Uh, we'll give you details as and when uh, you keep up listening or sticking with August 94.3. This is the 21st of July 2010 on your community watch. In a short while, I'll activate the full line so you can also share with us what you think uh, of a, a possible merger between the CPP, the PNC, and maybe other. Uh, smaller and compromised parties. You heard um, Bernardson uh, saying that he sees the possibility of the measure and uh, he sees uh, some sort of effectiveness in how well they are going to perform even come the 2012 general elections in the country. You can share with us what you think in a short while when the lines are active. You can call 032206 2207 and tell us exactly what you think. Uh, you can also tell us um, how well you think the NPP in particular is going to do uh, in the 2012 general elections uh, looking at the August 7th Congress and the development so far. And also the president calling on banks to reduce interest rates. According to uh, Mr. Gordon Newlove, uh, Samoa, who is a lecturer at the Business School of this university, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, banks cannot be induced in any way apart from by way of competition to reduce the interest rates. Uh, so how really can government uh, influence some of these things all these can be discussed by you. You can have your say right here on your community watch on Focus 94.3 at uh, 30 minutes after 8. Jones will um, tell us exactly. Um, Jones, look at, uh, looking at uh, Paco Sindium's threat uh, that uh, he won't be a part of or he won't have anything to do with the 2012 campaign and anything or activities by the CPP until after they merge with uh, the PNC. How, how possible do you think this is, Jones? Well, to me, I think it's possible. And the man has seen that... Um, 
they've tried all their possible means and they are not making it. So merging is the only option and I think he's um it's the right move to take. But uh, merging is the right move, but is, is it possible? I mean looking at the situation now. Nothing is impossible. I think it, it will take time, but with um perseverance I think they can merge. And should should that happen? Um how how sure should they be that uh, they can do something in twenty twelve? Well, at least there will be an improvement, though if they will not win, but there will be an improvement because together I think they they, they, will, they will be stronger than before. Okay, so if should they come together, would you predict that uh, CPP will win 2012? No, really, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. But they, okay. they <laughs> you don't see that happening. Um, <laughs> As for that one, I can assure you, CPP can win in 2012. But like I was wondering why they were merging uh, until Ben Epson said. You know, Ben Epson says something that the merging will be a very, very big threat to the NPP and the NDC that we know. Because when he said that, I understood him. Because, you know, there will be threats said in, in says that they will certainly put the whole thing to a roundoff. As he said, if they merge, if they come together, no party, either NDC nor NPP, will win uh, the thing with the, in the first round. That's why, as he said, the end. And the NPP and the NDC are trying hard so that they don't come together. But I prefer that they come together. At least it will be a better side than the CPP and PNC we know. Okay, do, do you see them coming together? As, as in coming together and then taking over power in 2012? They can't take over. Just that they coming together will be cool. So up to when do you expect them to, after coming together, take over power? <laughs> You know, with the CPP and PNC, none of them, you know, with the last election, each had, I think combined, they had less than 5% or so. Mm. Just imagine, 5%, they are coming to compute with parties which have 49 point something percent. Oh, it's impossible. Jones, what do you say to Ghana's attitude of, oh, they won't win, so we won't vote for them? <laughs> well... Hmm. I mean, you're supposed to be voting, but then you say, "Oh, they won't win, so I won't vote for them." Yeah, that's that's that one you can't take from the Ghanaian because you are not a, you, you cannot compete. You see, you don't have what it takes. You see, that's why Ghanaians are also saying that. So that one you cannot take from the Ghanaian. You should you should make yourself attractive. Okay, you should you should show yourself that you can when you come you have something for the Ghanaian. Without showing that, without making yourself attractive, without making yourself so competitive, I think the Ghanaian will not come for you. Okay, so that's coming from June's uh, Douglas. What do you what, what do you make of the attitude of oh they won't win so we won't vote for them? I think that's it. Because certainly they won't win. So a lot of people will say why should I waste my votes? Whereas I can use it to support a within party. I think the NPP, as June said, uh, the PNC and the CPP, they are not making themselves very attractive. But, but you, you are saying that they won't win, so you won't vote. Um, are we not forgetting that if you vote, it will, it will count? <laughs> Certainly, but, you know, we, in the country, we, we vote. A lot of us, though they are literates, they are elite, elites and the rest, but a lot of us vote on the base of tribalism and the rest mm. there are a whole lot of people that's why they usually say why should I an Asante vote for NDC and all those stuff but since birth there are people living there graduates and the rest literates but they are still going to vote for this part because they were born and bred at this area at Bantima at Ho and the rest that means you are not voting based on issues no matter what you bring out the people are not going to vote based on the issue that you are bringing out a few will be voting based on this issue. And those are the floating voters who at times change the whole thing. The the floating voters. Those are the people who vote on issues. But let's cast ourselves. How many of us will vote on based on what you are portraying, what you want to bring up? You think floating voters vote on issues? A lot because okay. floating voters they are indecisive. They've not yet decided. So a lot of them try to like going for the issues what you are saying in your manifesto what will benefit the country and them as well before they go in for you but apart from that there are a few floating voters the rest based on tribalism and they were born and bred in this part where they have come from um what will it take to change that attitude jones well i think um a lot of education 